Lesson 23, England and Spain. Mary Tudor's Rise. Okay, so Lady Jane Grey uh, is uh, the woman that Edward VI has agreed to make uh, queen uh, when he passes. Uh, instead of his half-sister, Mary Tudor, who was Catholic and older than him. Uh, the English are not going to accept this. They see this as a break with hereditary succession. The, the, the way you determine who really should succeed based on how closely related, their gender, their age, all of these things play in. So you have Mary the First. Uh, in this picture, you see uh, a portrait of Lady Jane Grey, and then you see from the 19th century a dramatic painting uh, of uh, the uh, execution of Lady Jane Grey. There's, there's no way that uh, Mary the First was going to let her stick around and be a threat. In uh, 1554, uh, Mary the First, Mary Tudor, has a political marriage with Philip the Second of Spain. Uh, and she's going to follow Philip II into war with France, which is going to uh, cost her Calais. Calais is the star on that map of France uh, on the slide. Um, and uh, so we see that many of the fears that probably some of these Protestant ministers in England are, have uh, are going to come to uh, fruition or realization. Um, they, they wanted Lady Jane Grey to maintain a Protestant England. They get Mary instead, who's ardently Catholic. She marries the, you know, Catholic superhero of the time, so to speak, and uh, follows him right into uh, a war with France and uh, into basically fulfilling his objectives more than, say, English objectives. This is uh, Bloody Mary. Uh, this slide deals with uh, how she handled things back at home. She's going to return England to Catholicism. Uh, the Protestants, including Thomas Cranmer, uh, are going to be executed. The bottom uh, illustration is uh, the uh, death of Thomas Cranmer. The top uh, is uh, the death of uh, another uh, one of these um, Protestant uh, leaders that... Uh, she feels needs to be made an example of. Uh, 287 Protestants are burned at the stake. This is why she is Bloody Mary. Many, though, are going to flee to the continent. These people are called the Marian Exiles. They include John Knox. And they're just waiting, biding their time in Germany and Switzerland, being exposed to even more strong, more extreme radical. So what's going to happen is Elizabeth I will become the new queen when Mary I passes away. And uh, she's going to have a very successful foreign domestic policy. She's going to assist, be assisted by the fellow in this picture right here, Sir William Cecil. Uh, they're going to have what's called the religious settlement, which will keep the peace in England. How, uh, what does this religious settlement look like? It is a centralized uh, church system. It's an Episcopal system, which is basically the Catholic system, Episcopal as in a bishop, uh, and uh, with a broad Protestant doctrine, but they maintain Catholic ritual, which will please quite a few people uh, who would otherwise be quite upset with uh, a Protestant church. This new Anglican church was a compromise that kept the differences uh, that uh, the Protestants and the Catholics had from creating some sort of unmanageable conflict. Uh, and uh, kept the lid, basically, on protest as much as possible. In 1559, she passes an act of supremacy. It's much like the 1534 Act of Supremacy, um, whereas uh, Henry VIII called himself the uh, head of uh, the supreme head of the church. Uh, they're going to use different terminology. They're going to say the supreme governor of the church. But that's really kind of a minor change. She is going to undo Mary the First, Mary Tudor's return to the Catholic Church. In the process, there's going to be a revised second edition of the Book of Common Prayer. That's the way your book uh, describes it. If 
you revise the second edition to me that might, makes me think it's the third edition but okay I'll, I'll go with the revised second edition that's in your textbook 1563 you have the 39 articles uh, a revision of Cranmer's 42 articles 42 minus 39 uh, is 3 so I guess 3 articles bit the dust Elizabeth's tactics uh, she has to deal with Catholic and Protestant extremists Jesuits uh, are encouraged and assisted uh, well, I'm sorry, the Jesuits encourage and assist Catholic extremists who plot against Elizabeth I. There's a bunch of plots, the Rodolphi plot, the Babington plot, and, and, and various others. She's going to reverse Mary Tudor's Catholic policies. She's going to refuse to marry Philip II. This is part of her policy of staying unmarried, to use marriage as a carrot in her foreign policy. And look there, there's the picture of the former Duke of Alencon who will become the Duke of Anjou. And remember, he is... Uh, we, we saw in, a, in, a, in the last lesson that he becomes uh, the titular head of uh, the Netherlands, the king of the Netherlands, uh, when they reject Philip II. But then he actually tries to rule, and they kick him out. Here we see this poor fellow. He's used, essentially, in Elizabeth uh, I's politics. He thinks he's got a shot at marrying her and becoming king of England, or at least queen consort, and uh, it doesn't happen. Elizabeth's moderation. Extremists look to marry Queen of Scots. Uh, her grandmother was Henry VIII's sister, and she is Catholic, so they're hoping she will become Queen of England. She's next in line, basically the way it's set up. Um, and even with the execution of proven would-be assassins whose purpose is to get uh, Mary Queen of Scots uh, on the throne and kill Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth I kills fewer Catholics than Mary I killed, uh, Protestants, and she ruled a lot longer than Mary uh, Tudor, Mary the First, did. Puritans. Puritans wanted to purify the Anglican Church of Catholic ritual, uh, and they wanted to get rid of the Episcopal system that was so similar to the Roman system, the, the, the bishoprics. In the 16th century, they had a lot of popular support, uh, and they worked through Parliament to create an alternative Presbyterian Church following Calvin's model Elizabeth I refused to do this. She wanted to maintain a centralized church where she had control. Congregationalists. These were more obscure, uh, extreme Puritans who wanted each congregation to be independent or autonomous. The fellow in the picture here is a fellow who will uh, move away uh, from uh, England uh, just a few years after Elizabeth I. He's going to move to the Netherlands. And then eventually he's going to end up uh, very early on in Massachusetts, settling in there. Uh, the Congregationalists were viewed as subversives. The Conventicle Act of 1593, one of the terms uh, that you wrote down, uh, required them to conform or face exile or death. And that's why a bunch of them decided to sneak off to the Netherlands. Now, she's also fa facing uh, deteriorating relations uh, with Spain. Um, in 1567, the Duke of Alba will march into the Netherlands, and she will uh, stop secretly aiding the Netherlands and just be outright giving them money, helping them out uh, left and right. Pope Pius V is going to excommunicate her. Uh, this is a picture of Pope Pius V. It looks like he's kind of waving high. kind of looks like Santa Claus a little bit. Uh, many of the sea beggars were English, and this is not going to help. The sea beggars, remember, are these these uh, Spanish criminals and, and uh, uh, exiles and various other criminals and exiles, and they're going to gather together and they're going to uh, besiege Brill uh, and uh, kind of get a lot of the uh, violent uh, rebellion against uh, Philip II's rule in the Netherlands going. English activity in the rivalry of Spain. In 1571, a French-English defensive alliance is uh, established sort of as a reaction to the Battle of Lepanto, where the, the Spanish have defeated the Turks, look like they're going to control the Mediterranean, at least for a little while, and really they, they are going to be able to influence the western Mediterranean a lot more than the eastern Mediterranean, because the Ottomans will recover quite a bit. 
Uh, in the 1570s, John Hawkins and Sir Francis Drake will raid Spanish shipping. These uh, Spanish galleons uh, bringing silver from Mexico and Peru to Seville in Spain, and they will try to, basically, they're, they're pirates supported by a country. Those are called privateers. And Drake will circumnavigate the planet uh, by 1580. Uh, and unlike Magellan, he's going to survive. And he won't die in the Philippines or anything like that. Um, uh, apparently he visits the coast of California, gets around. He's, he's really he's like an inspiration for characters like Zorro and Robin Hood and things like that. Uh, the St. Bartholomew's uh, Massacre will also lead England to more overt aid uh, to uh, France. So all these things are building, 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 creating uh, more and more of a rivalry with Spain. Mary Queen of Scots, she's the daughter of Mary Guise and James V of Scotland. She lived in France as a Catholic. She returned to Scotland after her husband Francis II of France died. Remember, Francis II, Catherine de' Medici, is the mom of uh, Francis II. John Knox will criticize her private masses. That was a capital crime in Scotland. And there's a scandal. Mary Queen of Scots uh, abdicates her throne uh, and flees to England after her lover, the Earl of Bothwell, is assumed to have killed her husband, Lord Darnley. Uh, and then he marries her. And um, part of this may be because Lord Darnley was basically trying to run the show. Uh, she murdered uh, a trusted confidant of uh, Mary Queen of Scots right basically in front of her. So there were problems with the marriage. Uh, she's going to hand her throne over to her young uh, son, year old son, James the Sixth. And she will live under house arrest in England, but as a potential Catholic heir to the throne, she represents. Uh, in 1583, Sir Walsingham, uh, essentially Elizabeth's spy master, is going to uncover a plot by the Spanish ambassador, ambassador Mendoza. In 1586, the Babington plot will be exposed. Babington sought Spanish help to kill Elizabeth I and place Mary, the Queen of, uh, Mary Queen of Scots, uh, uh, on the throne. She was involved. Uh, she gets executed. And this, this is the last straw, Philip II, he's going to ready his Spanish Armada, his fleet, to attack England. And we see here a picture of the execution of uh, Mary Queen of Scots. The Spanish Armada, Spain had to postpone their naval invasion until 1588. Drake will shell the port of Cadiz, damaging ships and ammunition. Uh, he will raid the Portuguese coast, 130 ships and 25,000 men will set sail toward England. Here is a big picture of it. Nice painting there. The Armada is going to fail. The English will stop transport barges from leaving port. These would bring the troops over to invade. Uh, English and Dutch ships are much swifter. They outmaneuver the Spanish. And then storms are going to break up Spain's huge fleet that's just too big, too crowded to really maneuver around effectively anyway. And, and definitely in each other's way trying to avoid uh, some of the problems with the storm. A third of the fleet will never return to Spain. They kind of go around uh, Great Britain and uh, some of them end up uh, you know, stuck in Ireland for a while. The Spanish decline. Protestants are going to be more unified and enthusiastic with this defeat of the Spanish Armada. Even though the Spanish will still have victories in the 1590s, they haven't really gone away. Uh, they're going to do quite well for a little while longer, but they, they really have lost their momentum. Philip II hadn't won on any of these fronts. He hasn't won in the Netherlands. He hasn't won in France. He hasn't won in England. He hasn't succeeded in bringing Catholicism back to England. He's lost Netherlands, uh, the northern Netherlands, to Protestantism, and he hasn't been able to keep uh, the Huguenots down in France at all. Um, after his death, France will dominate the continent. So Spain will become number two, and then number three down the road, whereas France will be number one, and then Germany will rise and, and compete with France. The Dutch and English will dominate the seas and chip away at Spain's colonial empire. And once again, here we see Mary Queen of, uh, I'm sorry, Mary Tudor and Philip II, both of them trying to maintain Catholicism, both of them failing to restore Catholicism in all of Western Europe. Thank you.